Hello and welcome to another Python tutorial. So in today's video, we are continuing our exploration of the beautiful soup library. So in the last video, we saw, you know, basically how a website is structured, you know, understanding the HTML code, the CSS and uh, the JavaScript. Uh, and then we kind of introduced the beautiful soup library and kind of how this library was developed in order to kind of help make the web scraping process just a little bit more efficient. And then we went into just some basic examples. So, you know, getting the information into a beautiful soup object, finding a particular instance of a tag, understanding that we can make it more specific if we add a certain attribute. We also looked at, uh, you know, when we found an object, that is an object itself, so that's a tag object, and that tag object does have certain attributes about it. Uh, one is a name, one is an attributes dictionary. Uh, we saw how to access that dictionary, and then we also understand that there's a text component as well. We also then looked at how we can do a find all method. So we can find not just one instance of a particular tag, but all instances of a tag. And so we're gonna pick up off of this point. And so naturally we kind of asked the question, Okay, we can find all the instances of a tag. Can we make our search just a little bit more what we would call uh, specific? And the answer is yes. So if we insert a cell below, what we'll do is we'll take this one and we'll say find all the A tags with an href in the document. And so all we're gonna do, so I'm just gonna add one more argument. It's gonna be called href and we're gonna set it equal to true. And so all that is telling me is the href has to exist in order to be sent back to us. Now, to demonstrate that this list is smaller, let's print out the length. Now, well, it's not really a list, it's a result set, but let's just print it out anyway. And at first glance, you're like, well, that's not a huge difference. <laughs> and it's not, um, basically what it's saying is there's only seven tags uh, that are A tags that also don't have an href component. So Basically, all of them have an href component. So that makes sense. Okay, now what do we do once we have this result set? Well, something we can easily do is we can loop through it. So we can say loop through the result set. And so we'll say for link in links, and we'll just do like the first 10. <laughs> I don't want to go through all of them. And we can say, hey, print that link. So there we go, okay, it's kind of nice, right? So we got all of our links just like we were expecting. Uh, maybe we wanna access the uh, href component, right? So they all should have an href component. Okay, that looks good. Uh, maybe we can do other ones. We've seen that the other ones have titles. Can we do that? We can try, it might not work, and I'll explain why. Ah, yes. So. Print it out the href, print it out the title, print it out the href, and print it out nothing because that particular um, a tag does not have a title attribute. And so this is what you'll run into sometimes. You can't assume all the tags have the same attributes. And so something we would have to do here is write, uh, sorry, wrap it in a try accept statement. And so we'll say, hey, try it. If not, uh, just simply continue on. So with this, we no longer get an error. And so some of these do have links and then some of them do have text. Sorry, not, not text, but a title. Uh, and so that's how we could do it if we wanted to. Now, what we'll also do is uh, we'll insert a cell below. So that's how we uh, uh, get all the particular uh, result sets for that has a certain attribute component. We can also make our, our search is a little bit more broad if we wanted to. So when we use the find all method, we can find not just all the A tags, but we can also find maybe all the table tags, right? And so if we go here, if we scroll down a little bit, we notice that there's all these wonderful tables and this maybe has all the data that we want. Well, you'll notice very quickly, these are all wrapped in a table tag. And so if I wanted to find all the uh, A tags and the table tags, uh, it's almost identical. We're just going to put both of them in a list. And so we'll say tables uh, and uh, a tags. It's probably too long, but whatever. And then we'll do soup find all. 
and then we'll put in our list. The first one is an A, and then the second one has a tag of table. And then if I do this, we will get back a bunch. Uh, and so I'm gonna put this out and keep in mind, it will might take a second to load, but I think it's kind of just to help demonstrate. Okay, so we see, okay, there's a bunch of wonderful A tags in here. And then if you go a little bit, a uh, little bit down, you'll notice, oh, there's a table class. Okay, now we're getting somewhere, right? So that makes sense. Uh, so that's how we can do multiple searches or at once if we wanted to, so we can find not just the A tags, but the table tags as well. Uh, if we also wanted to, we can also uh, do a more specific uh, search with a particular type of attribute. So up here, I was specifying that href had to be true or something like that. Maybe we want uh, tables, headers with styles or something like that, right? So we'll say uh, table headers. And so what we'll say here, search for tables and a tags. Here, what I'm gonna say is, okay, go to your soup object, call the find all method. And here I want the table header tag, so that's th, and it has to have an attribute of style that is equal to, and then this is the fun part. I had this written down, trust me, I don't remember this, but it has to have a width of 10%, and then it has a semicolon at the end. And then we'll call this table headers. And so what this did is it returned back that particular tag that was both a table header and had a style uh, width of 10%. And then I think if we call the text component, oh, that's probably not why, disregard that. And so uh, that's basically what that one is doing is you're finding that particular tag but you're also finding the tag that has a certain attribute with it. So it's very similar to up here, but I do wanna demonstrate that there's multiple attributes that exist in a particular tag. You don't have to always search for just href, you can work with the style attribute. You can work with, um, I think the other one's like nav box content or something like that. There's just a lot of stuff that you can actually put in here to make it uh, different. Now, if I go back to my actual page, what you can also do, uh, one of the things is like, oh, you might want all the tables that are a wiki table, right? So they have to have a class of wiki table. Well, this one's a little bit more different. Table headers with style attribute. Now I can say, find all the wiki tables. So how would that look? And I say wiki tables would be soup.findall it would be the table tag, but it would have a class attribute that is equal to wiki table. At least I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I have to make sure I spelt it right. Oh, uh, where is it? There it is. So you see here, there's a table tag, it's got a class attribute, and that class attribute is equal to wiki table. Uh, and so unfortunately, class is a reserved keyword in Python, so we have to do class underscore in order for it to find it. So that's just a little note to you guys. Now keep in mind, we're gonna get a bunch of tables back because that's pretty much all the tables. And so we can see, okay, table with a class wiki table. If you go down, you go down, you go down. Is that it? Is that the new one? Here's the second one. You know, go down, go down. So hopefully you're kind of catching on to the pattern. So you pass through a tag, you pass through an attribute, you're usually, you're good to go. Um, uh, you don't technically have to specify it for this one. Uh, you could technically, if I remember correctly, just do this. It still returns it, so the class one is kind of the default one. Uh, but naturally what I like to do is, I do like to actually make sure that I specify it, because otherwise I don't remember when I'm looking back, I'm like, wait a minute, which one is that again? Uh, and I just don't think it's, good habit to get into. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's also see how we can use a function to find a particular um, tag attribute and stuff like that. So we can actually define a function that basically returns the certain parameters. So if they're very specific, so I only want the list objects that have a 
uh, you know, what is it? Or I want only the list objects that have seven links or more or something like that. So how would that look? So first we have to define a function to find the items. And so that would look like this. It would be define list and we'll call it list with links. And then it will take through a tag object. And then what we're gonna say is return any of them that has a name that is equal to list. So they have to be a list tag object. And they also have to have tag find all. So this is a cool thing. You can also use the find all in here. Uh, they also have to have uh, seven A tags associated with it. And so here greater than uh, seven. So they have to have more than seven A tags in that particular list. And all we do is we pass through this function into the find all method. So we'll say list items with A tags. And so we'll say uh, list with a is equal to soup dot find all and then we pass through the list with links function so I'll put that here and then if I say list with a wonderful so again we get a lot of stuff back just as an FYI uh, but you can see here oh, okay this one had like probably 20 of them or something like that and then this one also had a whole bunch of particular A tags and stuff like that. So again, hopefully you're kind of catching on to the pattern that you can do more generalized or even more, uh, I would say, customizable searches if you leverage a function along with your find all method. Um, it, it does kind of come in handy when you're doing those more, what I would call complicated searches, if you want to think of it like that. Okay, so with that being said, we're gonna do one more situation and then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut off the video. So this is kind of gonna be the introduction to the family tree structure. So I'm gonna move to another Jupyter Notebook because I just want you guys to see it. I think it helps a little bit more to understand that. <laughs> First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert a cell below. So I'll go back here. This is what I'm gonna be posting up on, uh, what is it, GitHub? Here we are, section four. So we have to understand that when we're working with HTML code, there is kind of this underlying structure behind it, or at least Beautiful Soup has kind of defined that structure for us. Uh, and what do I mean by structure? Well, we obviously know HTML, it's made up of different tags, right? So here we have a body tag. But what we notice is that there's tags within an outer tag. So for example, the body tag contains both an A tag, a B tag, and a C tag. And so what we would call the, uh, the inner ones would be call them basically the descendants because they are belong into this particular outer tag. Uh, there's also what we would call children tags. And so the children tags are basically the first uh, inner layer. So it would be A in this situation. And so Beautiful Soup has built-in attributes where we can access these particular, uh, what we would call them basically, you know, elements uh, easily. And so we have an easy way to first get at them, and then we also have an easy way to navigate them. And so in the last example, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna create a new simple tree. So just like this one right here, and we're going to print it out so that way we can see it. And then in the next video, we'll go into more detail about how we navigate it. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is I'm creating a new variable called simple tree. This can just contains the HTML code that you were seeing right up here. And then what I'm doing is I'm passing this content again through a beautiful soup object. And then I have my now what I call simple soup. And then I call the prettyfy method, which again belongs to beautiful soup to make it more readable. Now, keep in mind, if you do this in a Jupyter Notebook, it just shows you these line breaks. It's not very useful, but if you print it out, ah, now you have something you can look at and actually understand. Now, I can technically do it up here with all the other stuff, but again, for simplicity at this point, I didn't want to get into that component just because there's going to be a bunch of code at you and it's going to be really hard to kind of see what we're looking with. 
okay, so with that being said, I am going to finish the video here. So if you have any questions more with the find all stuff, you know, please, you know, put them down in the comments below. I want to make sure I kind of walk you through that stuff because I know it is a lot. And then also, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates. This is a multi-part series, as you can tell. So we're going to have a couple of these videos kind of come out at once. And uh, I want to make sure you guys, you know, get familiar with it, right? And then, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty much it, actually. I thought I had something more to say. So we will see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching, guys.